Hey everybody, welcome to GTech. And today I'm gonna be putting together one heck of a system, honestly. Originally, I was planning on using this as a flipper system and I kind of still am. It's just that I'm selling it to somebody that I actually know because my buddy has really wanted to get into PC gaming. He just has not had the experience to build one himself or the time to put together his own system. So before I actually go about putting the system together, let me run down some of the basic specs we got here. So for the processor, we're using the Ryzen 5 3600. This is honestly one of the most popular processors on the market with gamers right now because it strikes an awesome balance between price and performance. With six cores, 12 threads, it's honestly pretty hard to beat. The cooler isn't anything special, it's just the Wraith Stealth cooler that's included in the box. And unless he wants to do some serious overclocking, this will handle it just fine. For RAM, he's gonna be running 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws 5 at 3200 megahertz. And all of these components are gonna be slotted into the MSI Gaming Plus Max B450 motherboard. This is a little bit more of an entry-level motherboard from MSI compared to some of their higher-end offerings. But even though it runs on the B450 chipset, it uses the max suffix in the title of the board, which means it comes preloaded with an updated BIOS to run third gen Ryzen processors right out of the box. And yes, I know that fourth gen Ryzen has just come out and honestly kind of blows everything out of the water, but that's not to say that the 3600 isn't still a great chip. And because I'm putting a B450 motherboard into this build, he'll be able to update his BIOS down the line should he want to run a fourth gen processor in the future. And for storage, I'm equipping this build with a one terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD, which means he's going to get insanely fast boot times, crazy fast load times. And because it's one terabyte, that'll hold everything from his operating system to some programs he wants to use to plenty of games. And for graphics, I'm going to be equipping him with a GeForce RTX 2080. This particular model from Gigabyte is a pre-overclocked WinForce model. And while yes, the RTX 2080 is technically a last generation graphics card nowadays, good luck finding an RTX 30 series card. That's actually how I came across this card because when the RTX 30 series got announced in early September, everybody started panic selling their graphics cards, fearing that they were completely obsolete at that point, which is kind of dumb. But I netted an awesome graphics card out of it. I managed to pick up this 2080 for just $390 on eBay. For power, I'm using an EVGA B-Stock power supply, but it is 700 watts and it's 80 plus bronze rated. So he's going to have plenty of wattage headroom should he want to upgrade to fourth gen Ryzen down the line, maybe a 3080 or a 4080 in a couple years. So this will give him plenty of headroom for that for many years to come. And lastly, all of these parts are going to be living inside of the very, very popular NZXT H510. I've got an awesome looking white model right here, which is honestly a lot more sleek than I thought it was going to be. I haven't actually built in one of these cases before because personally it's not my style, but the reason that it's even here in the first place is because I managed to get this as a part of a bundle deal with basically everything else other than the power supply and the graphics card. So I managed to score a Ryzen 5 3600, an MSI B450 motherboard, 16 gigs of 3200 megahertz RAM, a one terabyte NVMe SSD, and one of the most popular cases on the market right now, for just $350. And all of these parts are brand new. The person that I managed to buy this massive bundle off of just said that he never got around to putting the system together. And I believe him, he had every single box included. He had all of the mounting hardware, basically everything you need. But now that I've explained all of the parts that you see here, let's actually get started building it.
that concludes yet another build that I've completed. The NCXT H510, this was actually my first time working with the case, and it was actually really easy to install anything. I didn't have any major issues or anything like that. The only thing that was of a bit of concern to me is the way that the tempered glass side panel sits in. There's this little ridge right here above the power supply shroud that holds the bottom of the panel in place, and then you pop the whole thing in with little like rubber nubbins up at the top of the tempered glass side panel. There's just this one little like pull tab back here that you pop the whole thing out, and that's just kind of terrifying because I don't want the whole thing to come flying and hitting the table and exploding. Because as someone who's broken a tempered glass side panel before, I've got a little bit of PTSD with that. But otherwise, I think the build itself looks really nice. Um, I'm actually really surprised how well the red and the white uh, come together, because you always see black and red builds. That one's basically done to death. But otherwise, I didn't have any real issues. The motherboard BIOS that came pre-installed was perfectly updated and suitable for Ryzen 3000 series. So I got into the BIOS just fine. I was able to overclock the memory up to that 3200 megahertz. I could probably do a little bit of overclocking on say the graphics card because of that three fan cooler. Maybe a little bit on the 3600. Uh, I don't want to push the Wraith Stealth cooler too much. But honestly, this is just one heck of a system. It's going to serve my buddy really well. And it's probably performs better than my current system. I'm recording this segment before I do all of the benchmarks of the system. I'm so happy I was able to score that RTX 2080 for just 390. I would have liked to get it for around 350, but no one was willing to sell their 2080 supers for like 400. But I'm not going to complain. It's got 8 gigs of VRAM, ray tracing capabilities. It's still just a great performing graphics card overall. But otherwise, that's going to do it for now. So if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed below because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one. Honey,